Um, I am Phil Stone. I am an, uh, a full-time illustrator, um, part-time skateboarder. And that's pretty much all I do. I, I skate and draw little pictures. I had a short um, sponsorship in the 90s uh, from Trekker Trucks. And then when my bone came out of my shoulder, uh, that ended that. <laughs> I mean, it was cool. Chicks dig scars. I lost everything. Um, I was penniless and working, uh, living in a attic of a farmhouse when I tried to be an artist the first time. I thought I was going to be a comic book artist. Ten years went by, I completely failed. I was living in a farmhouse in an attic, and all of a sudden there was a knock at the at the door one day, and there was this dude there, and he lived a couple houses down, and he said, "Hey," and I said, "Hey." He goes, "You want to see my knives?" And I said, no, I don't want to see your knives. He goes, you want to play some magic? And I said, well, what's that? He goes, it's like Dungeons and Dragons. I said, I'm in. So we went over to his house and he kind of taught me how to play magic. And that was uh, mid to late nineties. And um, I eventually did see his knife collection. It was, it was very nice. And then that's how I got introduced to it. And then obviously, you know, it kind of went to the wayside and whatever like that until later on in life where I actually owned a game store and, um, you know, got me and my son into magic and stuff like that. And I can't play to save my life, to tell you the truth. I got a second chance at art. Um, I failed so bad the first time I became a D-list celebrity hairdresser around the world. Um, and then I ended up um, getting lupus. That kicked in, and I couldn't do hair anymore. And I was, I was illustrating for a company called N-World for several years on the side trying to impress my son. And I ended up landing a job with them where I was getting like, I don't know, these two goofy little illustrations a month for like, I don't know, 80 bucks a month. And um, when lupus kicked in, I couldn't do hair anymore. My wife and my son told me, they were like, look, this is your chance, do it. And um, so I went like headlong, I, I dropped everything that day. And I was like, emailed all my clients. I said, I'm not doing hair anymore. See ya. And the next day I was like, okay, I have seven months to um, become a full-time illustrator and make a living out of this. So doing everything wrong, I accumulated 16 or so um, small RPG companies that did third-party publishing of Dungeons and Dragons. Within six months, I wake up one morning at six in the morning and when I would start work and there was an email from um, an art director from WOTC um, with like a dollar amount for a job. And I thought it was a joke. I thought it was my mentor of 15 years playing a joke on me. So my reply to that email was, who the F is this? <laughs> Which they replied, no, this is legit we're offering is, I was like, oh my God, this is how this works, holy cow. And um, I said, yeah, I'm in. And it was for Wizards of the Coast for Magic the Gathering. And I was doing, I, I got lucky. I never applied, I have enough rejection in my life. I'm a black and white artist, they do beautiful color paintings at Magic. I was like, I'm not even gonna apply to them. I was doing the right thing at the right time and the right person saw it. And I got really lucky and it was, it happened to be for the whole D&D crossover thing with Forgotten Realms. I, lo I, I love interacting with people. Um, it, like as soon as I get behind that booth, uh, the hairdresser in me kicks in. I love interacting with people. The, the way I look at it is the, um, this individual planned on going to this event to do a certain thing. And they had this certain expectation of when they got there and what was going to happen. And I want to sort of meet that expectation. Um, I, I, I shake every hand, or at least I try to. Um, I at least try to tell one dumb story, you know, especially if they buy a certain card off me or something like that. I like to tell some dumb story about that card or some anecdote about it. Um, because I know what it was like when I went to Comic Cons when I was a kid. Um, and an artist would say something offhand that stuck with you, you know, and that was, it was a moment, you know, that, that always stays with you. So I, I try to respect the time of, that 
you know, the, 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 the fans came in, they, they, they paid their money to get their ticket to come in, whether they're playing or whatever. I want to respect that and, and kind of add to that experience in some way because, you know, they stopped at my booth for a reason. They like my work. Guess what? We're going to interact and we're going to have some fun.